Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is going to be a Black Desert Online a video guide. And today we are taking a look at cooking and how to get from beginner one to guru one and why that is important and you should do this. So uh, let's jump straight into it. Well, first things first, why do you want to get guru one cooking? What's so great about that, you ask? Well, uh, the answer is quite simple. It's easy money, silver, Every single day, little to no effort, and who doesn't like that? But just how much money is it? Let's just take a look. So um, when you're going in for uh, for cooking, the goal of getting Guru 1 cooking, um, it gives you a lot of mastery along the way. And assuming that you have full TED Lodger uh, gear by then, which is very obtainable uh, on your way there, but with full TED Lodger, you're going to have 800 mastery you're actually gonna have 803 mastery but uh, the bracket is 800 so with 800 mastery you are gonna get a benefit a bonus of 45.7 percent additional and when you're turning in imperial boxes you will always get a 250 percent value no matter distance or connections or anything um, so you just always turn them in where you are basically now let's do the math so with that, um, you're going to have uh, 2.5 and we're going to add the um, 0 0.457 and that's going to give us a total uh, value per box we turn in of uh, almost 3. And what that means is when I go here at Guru1, I can turn in a Guru box. We're gonna turn into this guy here, and I can see the Guru box is worth 320,000 silver. And with the bonus from the turn-in, plus my mastery bonus, for one Guru crate, we're looking at this multiplier. So that's gonna be 320,000 times 2.957. So every single crate I turn in, I get no, almost 950,000 silver. And again, along the way, um, you're going to be able to get more contribution points because you're cooking, and cooking gives you a byproduct that you can turn in for contribution points. That's how I got my amount of contribution points. And the amount of crates you can turn in every day is 50% of your contribution points. So for me, I have uh, 425 contribution. Half of that is uh, 212.5 and will always round down. So that's why I can turn in 212 crates every single day. Now, a realistic number to go by is going to be around 300 contribution point. That's one of the, the soft caps. After that, it becomes a lot uh, harder to get every point. Eventually, you're going to get 350 though. Uh, but let's just assume 300 contribution points. Uh, that means that this value here times 150 so that's 141 million silver every single day but of course that's not all right you are let's let's assume that you want to do it the most simple way that's the way i normally suggest it and you don't want to really do cooking you just want the money right so we can't just take that value um, the way you do it and the beautiful thing about getting Guru 1 is you can just buy the meals. So let's just do the math real quick, right? Let's just pick an item, Valencia meals. If we just buy this item, right? We're going to buy this item here. We buy it from the marketplace and when it's cheap and all that, we'll just buy a bunch to see there's a reason a lot of bits in here. Let's just assume that we're going to buy it and we're going to be paying 30,000 for it. 30,000 silver per meal now how many do we need per crate well we need um, 18 balance meal per crate so let's look at the math again um right clear this up so we had again per crate 320,000 times uh 2.957 that's the value per crate we sell right however i have to pay something per crate so every single crate i make i have to buy 
18 meals and I'm paying 30,000 a pop. So that means buying meals from the marketplace, doing zero cooking at all, and just churning them in every day, that's gonna give me 406,000 silver in pure profits per crate. And again, let's assume we turn in the 150 crates. That's 61 million silver per day for doing nothing. Uh, now, obviously, if you wanna do your own cooking on the side and gather the materials and, and make the meals yourself, you can uh, make a lot more money, but just getting 61 million silver every single day to just buy an item on the marketplace and turn it in. That's not too shabby. Just every single week, that's 426 million silver that you are going to get in pure profits. And that number is only going to go up, uh, assuming you get more contribution points or if you keep cooking and so on and so forth. Now, let's see how we do it. All right, guys, so that was why you want to do cooking. The next question is, of course, where do you want to do cooking? And the answer, as you can probably tell, is uh, Calcium City. Now, the main reason for that is uh, very simple, vendors. So in Caltheon, if you search here under fruit, you will find uh, Milano Bellucci, and she's a super important vendor for cooking. Uh, she's the fruit and vegetable vendor, and she will be able to sell you all the stuff you need to uh, continuously keep cooking, and you won't have to wait for your notes to generate it and all that. And you will definitely not be able to get enough from your notes, uh, a lot of the time you can buy the fruits and veggies on the marketplace, uh, but buying them from the vendor, still apparently a lot of people are not aware of this. So here you go. That is why you want to be in Caltheon. Okay. Hi guys, so we made it to the vendor and as you can see, she sells a whole bunch of uh, fruit and vegetables. Uh, important to note about the fruit and vegetables, just always buy the cheapest one, uh, which would be strawberries for fruit and paprika for vegetables. The reason for that is when a recipe requires fruit, it doesn't matter which type of fruit it is, any will do, and same with vegetables. So just always go for the cheap version. Um, and what I like to do is, let's say I'm missing some uh, vegetables. So I'll just uh, buy a bunch. And so I don't have to keep running back and forth all the time. I'll just stack my horse and we'll buy some more as well here. I mean, we're down here now, might as well. And if I'm happy with this, then we'll just write back and put it into the storage so we have easier access to it when we need it, so we don't have to keep running back and forth buying all the time. And I suggest doing the same thing with materials such as a uh, leavening agent, uh, sugar, salt, um, olive oil, etc., etc. And the vendor where you buy that is on the way back here. So right here at the, the inn, this guy here, he's the one that's going to sell you all the other cool stuff. So you can buy your cooking utensils and your recipe stuff like the, the salt and the sugar and everything from this guy here. And again, I suggest just stacking up on some of it if you can afford it. If you're just beginning and uh, you don't have like the, the capital to invest into just having the stock uh, available so you save time. Um, just buy as you need, or uh, as you go. Um, so next up, of course, is how to do cooking. What do you need to uh, to do it and get some good value out of it? Well, first off, you gotta have utensils. Uh, without cooking utensils, you simply can't do cooking. Um, there's different ones in the game, and for now, we're just gonna be sticking with the ones from a vendor. You can also just buy them on the marketplace if you're going in and you're looking for the different utensils. Advanced utensils is the most used one because it has a decreased timer on it. Uh, but for now, the vendor ones will do. And I actually think I personally ended up at Guru by just using the vendors one. So it is totally doable. Uh, you can also make them yourself, but that's for a different video. Right, so we need the cooking utensils. Uh, the next important item is going to be a cooking outfit. And the most important thing here is do not get uh, tricked 
into going for the manners or the logic I want. The one you really want is the good old school silver embroidered cook's clothes. So this one right here, um, again, everything to skill. So if you can afford a uh, plus four, definitely get it. It's really, really good. It's worth it. Um, realistically, a plus three is what you should be aiming for. But again, don't be scared off. If you're starting out and you can't afford it, just go for a good old plain um, plus zero, plus one. Basically, get whichever one you can afford. But the, with the current economy and everything, I think a plus three, just buy it. Don't worry about making yourself. It can be a real hassle. Just buy one and you're good to go. Plus three is what you should aim for. All right, next up is, of course, the alchemy stone. Now, there are different alchemy stones, and I think most realistically, you should be aiming for a spirit stone. You cannot repair them, but they are super good. Uh, the main thing you're looking for here is the alchemy and cook time reduction, basically meaning that you cook faster so you can get more EXP per hour or more products per hour. It's super important. After that, some things you should definitely be having are cron food. So um, there's a, an Oasis event still going where you can buy cron food. This buff right here gives you a life EXP, mastery, and also a cooking reduction. And it costs you one silver. <laughs> uh, I'll show the vendor as well. And you just go to this vendor and you buy it for one silver. Get a lot. To get the, the cron meal, what you're looking for is Ellie, the Oasis Vendor. And you can find her in every major town. She's always going to be right next to the Stable Keeper. So here in Calthium, it's out here, just uh, going straight north. And let's see, she's over here. Right, so Ellie, the Oasis Vendor, she has a lot of cool stuff for one silver. Uh, all the Crown Mills, Traveler's Map, Carrots, and like full tri gear if you need that for an ult. But what we're looking for is the C Crown Mill. And again, one silver, there is no limit to how much you can buy. Definitely get a lot. Another really nice item you can get, which I personally use all the time, is a storage container. And that's going to allow you to access your storage, where you have all your materials for cooking and everything, and take them out in the quantity you need, but also put in your, your materials that you just made the finished products into your storage so you don't have the same weight issues you would normally. It saves a lot of time and it's really convenient. So to get a storage container, you go to your uh, storage keeper, you just talk to him, chat, and you say rent container. It costs you 10 contribution points, but it is super well spent. So we're gonna rent this one here. And what you do is you go to your house, placement and we place down the storage container and what it's gonna allow us to do is just open the container and now I have my full inventory full storage access I can take out as much as I want not limited to made weight or anything like that it is really nice and well worth the 10 contribution points The road to Guru One cooking uh, does not require you to do any gathering or anything like that, but you do require some notes. And the notes that you should be getting, the most important ones, um, let's start from an end, is the grain notes. So for those notes, we are talking about potatoes, um, barley, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So up here at Valencia, you definitely want to get the potato notes and also the chicken meat. You want the chicken meat and the eggs, super, super important. As you can see, I still have all my chicken uh, meat notes, but I don't have the potatoes anymore. Uh, you should get them though. <laughs> Same here, uh, Batali farm and also Flinto farm, potato and chicken meat. Next up is my favorite note, probably in the entire game, um, Shuri farm. It costs a bit more contribution points, and you should try and get a worker out of Tarif for it. The good thing about this note is that it gives you the white, green, and blue version of sweet potatoes. Absolutely amazing note. But if you don't have the contribution point, skip on this note. Get all the other ones first and then this one at the end. Super worth getting though. 
Um, right. Furthermore, if you can afford it, there is also notes down here in Odraxia. Really, really good note. That's a potato note. That's also a grape note, which you will also want. And in Calthion, at the Northern Wheat Plantation, you're going to have some barley notes and wheat notes. Also worth getting. The other notes you are looking for are the fruit notes. So we already went over that you can just buy them from the vendor, but you might as well save some silver. So get the grape note in Odraxia next to the potato note. And also up here in Costa, there's a grape note. Cost you two CP and you can get a worker out of Olivera. You should probably also get this one here if you can afford it, the olive note, very nice note. Uh, but for now, focus on the fruit ones. After that, we're going to Valencia. So a lot of the, um, the good meals and everything, uh, Valencia meals, the one we were looking at earlier, and there are some great notes out here. However, they are somewhat uh, costly on contribution points. You should be getting the two notes here with the nutmeg and the teff out of Sangrain Bazaar. Over here at Shakato, you should be getting uh, the fig star anise and the fig pie. You can get some notes up here. I don't have them normally, um, but you should definitely get the notes here at Valencia, Valencia Plantation, Day Palm and Frique. And if you can also get the Day Palm over here. One more note that's kind of good to get is down here at Portiferia. You can go out and you can get fish notes. They're going to give you dried fish and all the recipes you're going to run into with cooking that requires normal fish, you can substitute it with dried fish. So get the notes here. I just have one note. You should probably in the beginning get both of these so you can have three um, fishing notes running. But for me, I've been stacking off for so long that I just have one uh, going and I still have a bunch of leftover fish laying around. And again, important. You might not have contribution points for all the notes to begin with. So just make sure you get the grain notes first. I would definitely get the chicken and egg notes as well. And to just expand from there. And now for the big one. What to make? The first thing to do is make vinegar. And when you have a lot of vinegar, you make pickled vegetables using that vinegar. And that's it. <laughs> That's literally it. You spam that until you are guru. Now, obviously, along the way, you can make stuff like uh, fig pie using your Valencia note materials, make a uh, date palm vine, make your smoked fish. All of those things you are gathering from your notes along the way, turn it into what's required for the meals down the line. But you could literally make vinegar and pickled vegetables all the way to guru. Personally, I made beer and chicken meat from beginner one to guru 30. Um, and that was back in the days where it was way harder. It was still super easy, super comfy. And that's literally what I did. It wasn't until guru 13, I started to actually do the real cooking and for money making and stuff like that. Uh, you can just bust out. The most important thing when it comes to uh, cooking and EXP is keep cooking. Just always have something to cook. But let's look at it. Vinegar. How do you make that? Well, it's a very simple recipe. You need... <laughs> one grain, one fruit, one sugar, and one uh, leavening agent. Now, the grains, uh, the potatoes, the barley, etc., etc., we are getting from our node system that you've been uh, setting up and the strawberries, the fruit, we can buy from the vendor, no problem. And the sugar and the uh, lifting agent, we buy from the vendor as well. No. After we've made a lot of uh, vinegar, we are going to take that vinegar and turn it into pickled vegetables. And I guess this is a great time to actually tell you guys that uh, the search bar here on cooking and alchemy utensil for some reason is case sensitive. So if you can't find something, make sure you capitalize the letter and don't do like me. <laughs> right. So to make pickled vegetables, we're going to need eight veggies and any will do. We're using, in this case, the paprika we bought from the veggie vendor just earlier, uh, sugar, livening agent and the vinegar. 
And basically we're gonna be chugging those in and making as much as possible. Uh, one thing that's important to note somewhat about this is you need a Princess one to start making this and the vinegar you can do from beginner one. So if you've never done any cooking before, you can just start out with the vinegar, make a bunch, you'll get a Princess skilled, even professional in no time. And then you can start making these easy peasy. Well, let's make some pickled vegetables. Um, we're gonna go to the container and we're just gonna make 100 batch real quick. So uh, 800 pickled vegetables, uh, 400 vinegar, and 200 and 200. And we throw in the, the numbers per craft. Don't throw in all at once. It has to be the number you want per craft, batch production, and yes. Now, you might ask, well, what do we do with the pickled vegetables? And there is a reason why this is the item we're making. The first reason is that it is super easy and convenient. You don't have to do any gathering. 100% of the materials for this you can buy from vendors or get for notes. Um, and the second reason is that this is actually the best item for Imperial cooking before you get to Guru. Now, you can make a bit more profit on some of the master boxes, but it's only slightly more profit and the alternative cost is way too high. So all those materials you should be using for something else, uh, meals for guru boxes, etc. cetera. Um, so this is the premier item to actually make. Now, how do you do this? Well, you make a bunch of these along the way. When you get to professional one, which you will be able to do in no time, um, you can make these into boxes. You click your L tab, you go under Imperial Cushion, Cushion, uh, throw these in. Um, the blue versions counts as three green. So you just throw these in and you click go. Now I would say if you can uh, get a, uh, what's it called, a Venisil outfit so you can do this from your storage and don't have to have it in your inventory. Weight is a massive issue when it comes to Imperials, um, but well worth doing. So you're gonna make them uh, into the professional cooking boxes and you can do it with the blue version as well. And you can make them, stack them up. So let's say you have some time, you're playing another game, you're playing some uh, Raid Shadow Legends in the background, just chilling out and you throw them in here and you can just stack them up, keep building, building, building. And in my case, I have around 5,000 something uh, guru boxes right now that I've just been making when I have nothing else to do really. And I'm semi AFK from the game. Uh, so you can build them up and have a bunch laying around. And now every day you want to take them out and you go over here to this vendor. Make sure you have as high of mastery as you can. So if you have a Lodger uh, cooking outfit, now is when you put it on. You talk to this guy here, Imperial Delivery, and you sell them. Now, I've already turned in my boxes today, so I can't sell anymore. Um, the way it works is you have a daily limit, a personal daily limit. So I can turn in a total of 212 boxes every day. Now, there's also an NPC limit, so you can look at the professional cooking boxes here. This NPC on this channel can take 234 more boxes. Now, if I sell these three, there will only be 231 boxes left on this server, this channel. They reset every three hours, so if it's sold out uh, when you're looking at it, then wait a bit or change channel and you might be able to sell. Um, it's a good idea to like find a time where you know it's going to reset and just go and sell right after that. And that's basically what you do all the way until Guru. At Guru, you can literally just buy the Valencia meals, buy the Belenos, Medaya, everything. I've got a link to a um, cooking calculator down in the comments that will basically do all the profits for you and tell you which one is the best one here and now. But as you saw in the beginning, the math is quite simple and any of the, um, the boxes are gonna give you great profits. But I would say look at the Serendia, Medaya, Valencia, or Belnos uh, meals and turn those in at Guru. Hope you guys found this uh, helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate, drop them by my stream. I stream three to four times a week at Twitch TV slash Biceptions Prime. Also, let me know in the comments uh, what you thought about this type of guide and if this is something you wanna see more of. That being said, Take care, guys. I'll catch you all later.